Throughout history, there have been countless unexplainable stories, events, and moments captured on audio. These horrifying tapes were archived, never to be heard again. Until now. These are the tapes of trepidation. Tape number 23, Side A. What happens when we aren't looking? Haven't you ever noticed when you look into a mirror? It's hard not to make eye contact with your reflection. It makes you feel uneasy, right? I know it does for me anyway. Well, the other day, it was late at night. I had to use the restroom, so I went upstairs and turned on the light. Something fell off, but I shrugged it away and did my business. As I was leaving the restroom and glanced at my mirror, that's when I saw it. My reflection was dark. Nothing but a blur, really. Within the fraction of the second it took for me to blink, my reflection was back to normal. Looking me in the eyes and smiling when I did. I ignored it, figuring it was part of my overactive imagination. I went downstairs and continued on with my evening activities. A few horror movies, an hour or so of gaming on my computer, the usual boring night for a teenage guy with no plans. A few games deep into my playtime, I had a queasy feeling about myself. Not like a sick feeling, but a nervous, anxious feeling. I glanced up to look at my room's mirror and thought I saw something in the window. I got up right away and turned on the light to see what the hell it was. I was freaking out, because this was the second time in the night I thought I'd seen something. Well, when I looked out the window, nothing was there. This was a relief, because I sleep on the second floor of my house. I turned around and happened to look at the mirror again, but I saw it for sure this time. My reflection was a dark figure staring me down. I didn't blink this time. I knew for a fact that it was right there. I stood up straight and walked right towards it. The lights in my room were on, so I felt a little safer than before. However, the closer I got to my reflection, the clearer it got. I could make out facial features, short, saggy hair, a crooked smile, and the worst part were its eyes, bleeding and hollow. It looked to be stuck in a scream of pain. I almost felt pity for it, but it was beyond harrowing. It was evil at the deepest part of reality. All of it was pitch black. All the light that was cast upon my reflection was soaked up, never to be seen again. This time, the reflection wouldn't disappear, no matter how badly I wanted it to. It waved to me. I couldn't move, I couldn't speak. It was like its gaze held me in place. I was so horrified by what I was seeing, I could only hope it was a dream. That's when it spoke. I still don't know if it was because I was in shock or because it had no voice. But I could hear nothing coming from the mirror. It started raising its arm, 
looking like it was reaching out to me. I looked down and saw my arm was in the air too. It was controlling me. As it took a step closer to the mirror, so did I. Thank the Lord for my parents having other children, because my older brother had come into my room, asking why I didn't accept his game invite. The moment he came into the room, I dropped to the floor, finally able to control myself again. With him in the room, I explained to him what had happened to me, and we decided to look at the mirror together. Our reflections were there, but normal this time. He thought I was crazy, as would anyone who didn't see it for themselves. To be cautious, I grabbed my laptop to join him downstairs and sit with him while he continued to game. After a round or so, I had completely forgotten about my dark reflection. I slept relatively well for the night, except I had one nagging feeling that something was watching me. When I woke up, I knew what it was. It was me. Well, not me, but my reflection. Every time I pass by a mirror or some sort of reflection, it's there, watching me, trying to get me inside with it, trying to pull me in. Ever since that night, I haven't been able to look into a mirror without another person in the room. I don't think our reflections dare show themselves to someone else. Either that, or we only see our own reflections. Whatever the case, there is clearly something living inside our reflections. It may be our true nature, or just some evil being that takes on a specific form or our identity. Its motivation, unknown. Its mission, get me to come to it. Our reflections react to us, but we react to these reflections. Just keep it in mind that when you are all alone and there is some sort of mirror image of yourself in the room, it is watching you. And one day, it may show itself to you. And when it does, I hope someone is there to save you. Don't look away. Side B. Mirror Demons. It was a usual day for me. I woke up, brushed my teeth, had breakfast, went to school, and then came home again. But that was when it happened. I was doing homework in my room, the only sound being the tip-tapping of the keyboards on my laptop. It was late at night, therefore the rest of my family were asleep. I checked the clock in the far corner of my room. It was 10.30 p.m. exactly. I turned on the lamp on my bedside table and tiptoed over to the mirror that sat facing the wall. I had always been afraid of mirrors at night, so I turned them over when it started to get dark. I had every right to be afraid. I flipped the mirror over and stared at my reflection. I thought something was off, so I leaned in closer until my nose almost touched the mirror. I stayed there for a while, until I finally drew back. In the mirror, my lips started to curl at the sides into a smile, so I reached my hand up to my mouth. That's when I realized 
I wasn't smiling. Only my reflection was. My reflection smile grew into a demonic, almost manic smile. I touched the mirror, fear filling my body. Then it all went black. I awoke, my reflection still grinning. It was holding a knife. What are you? I asked, terror spreading throughout my tone. Have you forgotten? It spoke with a paranormal voice. I am your darkest thoughts. The thoughts that keep you awake at night. All those people in insane asylums are reflections that have escaped. Trapping the sanity within you inside the mirror. Just like you now. I looked around and realized I was on the wrong side of the mirror. I was the reflection now, and my darkest thoughts were free. Thanks for releasing me. I'll have fun on this side. It smirked and licked the blade of the knife, and with that, it disappeared, leaving me trapped as a reflection. All I could do was listen to the screams and cries of pain of my family <coughs> echo through my house. This has been tape number 23, what happens when we aren't looking, and mere demons, by the Tapes of Trepidation Horror Narration Podcast. Side A, what happens when we aren't looking, was written by Dream State, and it was originally posted on the Creepypasta Wiki. Side B, mere demons was written by an anonymous author, and it was originally posted on the Creepypasta Wiki. Music for this episode was provided by Coag, with a link to their YouTube channel in the show notes. Narration production and sound design for this episode was by TJ Hodder. The tape's trepidation theme was written by the incredible J.M. Scherf. All logos, banners, overlays, and graphic design work was provided by the talented Jason Reese from Jaybird Digital Arts. If you have a story you would like to submit or a question regarding the show, please contact us at Tapes of Trepidation Podcast at gmail.com. Support the show by subscribing and leaving a rating on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Audible, your favorite podcatcher, or on YouTube. Be sure to tell your friends. Word of mouth is extremely helpful to a new podcast like this one. Check us out on social media through the link tree in the show notes. We have Facebook, Instagram, and Discord. We have a lot of fun on Discord, so come hang out with us. If you'd like to support the show a little more, consider joining the Tapes of Trepidation Patreon, where for as little as $5 a month, you can gain access to monthly bonus short story narrations, the weekly behind-the-scenes podcast within the archive, and much more. Higher tiers also have really exciting rewards, like bonus exclusive live readings and personalized narrations that you can request once a month just for you. Come join us and become trapped within the archive. Just like my current patrons, Kelly Sisson, Neil Skarupa of Neurotic Voice, Doozer Pin Dan, Ronan Komori of Baseline Feed, Eric Phones, and Patrick Stewart. Thank you all so much for the support. It really means the world to me. 
All content used on Tapes of Trepidation is either original, used with permission, or is available on your Creative Commons share-alike license. All rights reserved, unless otherwise stated. This podcast and its content may not be redistributed or rebroadcasted without the express written consent of Tapes of Trepidation and the story's author. Thank you so much for listening.